Hi, in the last video we talked about file management more generally, about how you should keep and look after your files when you're working on projects, but also talking about file formats and how they may make use of compression to actually store images and audio and other ones we'll look at in the next video. So here we're just looking at images and audio and a few common formats for storing those types of files. So this is not an ex ex exhaustive list. There are other file formats I'm not mentioning. I'm just going to go over ones which I think are most important. And unfortunately, it is really a case of just learning different properties and also some limitations of each format. So that in an exam, you can give different examples of formats based on the scenario and based on properties and limitations. Okay, first of all, looking at images, just any single picture, photo, graphic, whatever you are doing. The most common format is arguably JPEG. So JPEG is very well known. You probably would have come across it. You don't need to know what it stands for, anything like that. But you do need to know that JPEG uses lossy compression. So it is significantly reducing your file size, but an issue is because it's lossy, you are deleting some of the actual colors maybe, or some of the actual um, resolution of your image. So you may have some loss of quality. It is very portable as a property, which means that you can use it on loads of different devices. It's not only specific to certain devices and certain software. It's very portable. You can use it on lots of different devices. A limitation of JPEG, however, is that backgrounds are always solid. And this contrasts with PNG. So PNG files are have some transparency, or certainly it can maintain transparency. So if you've got a graphic you've made and it's designed to have a transparent background, then a PNG can support that. Again, like JPEG, there are no issues with portability. It can be used on loads of different devices and software applications. But just going back to transparency, this image here is stored as a PNG. And as you can see, when I animate it, it is transparent. We can see that orange table line below. Whereas if we had a JPEG like this image, we, the background is not transparent. We often have just a white background or maybe even a checkerboard to indicate that nothing is there, but it's not it's not transparent. We can't use uh, that transparency like we can with PNG. But in terms of limitation, it does use lossless compression as opposed to lossy for JPEG, and so your file sizes will be larger generally than JPEG. To give you two more examples, a little bit lesser known examples, but they're still worth knowing. A BMP image is a bitmap image, that's what it's short for. So this uses no compression, so it leaves your file, your image file, at its original quality, which is a good thing in some cases if you're doing maybe a really high quality billboard or you're printing a glossy magazine, leaving it in its original quality is quite important. But clearly, if there's no compression, you're going to have large file sizes and they're very unsuitable for websites where having to download the original quality file may take too long. And finally, for images, the SVG file format is interesting because it doesn't actually use any pixels. It stores the image data using maths, essentially, without using those individual dots of color, which are pixels. And when we have got pixels, like with JPEGs, PNGs, or bitmap images, we have the issue when we are trying to make them really big, we scale them up, we start to have pixelation. So for example here on the left might be an example of a bitmap or a PNG or a JPEG and we make it big and we get those pixels and it becomes quite ugly to look at. Whereas a vector doesn't have any issues with pixelation. So an SVG, which is a vector image, will not lose quality as you make it bigger. It's scalable. However, just because of the way we are storing SVG images using maths as opposed to little blocks of color, it's very, very difficult to store realistic looking color gradients and shading. And so often images stored as SVG files look quite cartoonish. They're using quite artificial colors and artificial gradients. You can't really represent a photo using SVG. It's really only for cartoon graphics, etc. In terms of file sizes though, SVG images tend to be very, very small because we don't have to store loads of different pixels, we're just storing really the properties of the image as opposed to loads of dots of color. Okay, moving on to a few more file formats to learn, unfortunately, this time we're looking at audio formats, so how we can store sound in a computer. First one to mention is a WAV. So a WAV file is uncompressed. So importantly, your sound you're listening to will be the, sound, will be the same as the original recording. So WAVs are used by people who really care about how high quality the audio will be. But of course, the more data you are storing, the larger the file size will be, which is especially noticeable when you're having to download or upload files. If you're streaming music, you may not get, it may take a while to download your song if it's stored as a WAV. In contrast, an MP3 uses lossy compression. So file sizes are small, but for someone who 
maybe is very musical or cares a lot about how high quality their speakers are, something like that, will, may notice some difference in quality compared to the original because MP3 is deleting some of the data to make it a smaller file size. So maybe if you are doing a radio advert, MP3 might be fine, but a WAV might be better if you are using a really fancy sound system, maybe in a cinema. MP4 is a little bit different. It's not quite, it's not like a fourth version of MP3. It's different in that it's a container. So it, it kind of contains the data and gives you a lot more options than other file formats would. So with WAV and MP3, pretty much you can't really make some choices. But with MP4 you can, so you can choose exactly what compression you want to have on your audio. But also MP4 can also store videos too, so it's quite versatile. A codec is something which is getting your sound into binary, so it can be stored on a computer, and then decoding it to make it go back to the original sound. And the different codecs can specify how exactly the compression is done, so there is a lot more versatility and you can choose between lossy lossless and different ways of doing things. But the issue with the codecs is really because they are quite, you know, because you are picking and choosing which ones you're using, some might not be compatible with older software, and so you might have to be a little bit careful with what codec you choose to make sure it can be portable.